This is a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King here in New York. We have breaking news for you from Florida, where a judge has just dismissed the classified documents case against President Donald Trump. Now, this is a case where Trump was accused of holding documents at his Mar-a-Lago resort that should have been returned to the National Archives. Scott McFarlane has been covering the Trump case. He joins us now from Pennsylvania covering the other big story in the, in the Trump case. And what the, the assassination attempt against Donald Trump. You were there in Pennsylvania where in front of the home of the shooter. Scott, good morning to you, but let's talk about this big breaking news from Florida. Is this a big surprise to you? What has happened here? This is a different type of shock, Gail. A 93-page ruling from a Trump-appointed judge, Eileen Cannon of Fort Pierce, Florida, dismissing the indictment in this classified records case, which was the first ever federal criminal case brought against a former U.S. president. She makes the argument throughout this order that she believes the special counsel, Jack Smith, was unlawfully appointed and unlawfully funded. There are reasons for that we'll get into. But this case has already been a firestorm politically. There have been concerns among Republicans that Jack Smith overreached that he was politicized. There have been concerns among Democrats that this judge was slow walking the case, dragging it out well beyond the 2024 election. And now this judge, Eileen Cannon, who held hearings on small bore things that would otherwise have moved swiftly, who had a series of delays and long waiting periods before issuing earlier decisions, has just knocked the case down. It's gone. And I've talked to a few sources over the past few minutes who say this is not surprising. This is shocking. Scott, thank you very much. Stand by for just a second. Jan Crawford covers the Supreme Court for us. She's on the phone now. Jan, good morning to you. You heard that Scott just said this is not surprising. This is shocking. What do you say? Well, yes. And I mean, I think that's because. Uh, generally, for the past 20 or so years, uh, they've understood that these special counsels were lawful, that uh, these kind of prosecutions could proceed. But Judge Cannon, in her ruling, says that it violates the Constitution, uh, that she should have been funded, as Scott said, a different way. Uh, and she's dismissing this case. Why I think it's not entirely shocking, though, is that Justice Clarence Thomas flag this as an issue in another Trump case, the January 6th case, when the Supreme Court ruled uh, that Trump does not have absolute immunity for prosecution. Justice Thomas wrote a separate concurring opinion that is in many ways a roadmap of sorts flagging the issue that he believes the special counsel Jack Smith's appointment was unconstitutional. Now, what does this mean? What's the bottom line? It means, of course, there will be no classified documents trial, but there was not going to be one before November anyway. But it is also potentially significant for the January 6th trial and whether Judge Chuckin can go forward with that trial. Trump's lawyers did not file for this hearing in that case, did not make this motion uh, that the special counsel was unconstitutional, but they are certain to file those papers now. And so that will further complicate uh, any efforts to have a trial in the January 6th case before November, Dale. All right. A very big break for Donald Trump today. Thank you, Jan. CBS News legal, con legal contributor and Loyola Law School professor, that's Jessica Levinson, joins us now. Good morning to you, Jessica. What's your reaction to hearing this decision? Uh, I am surprised, but exactly as Jan Crawford just said, this is something that Justice Thomas telegraphed in that case that we all got to talk about, dealing with whether or not former President Trump has some or absolute immunity from criminal prosecution. This is something that Justice Thomas brought up during the oral arguments where all of a sudden he says, you know, I think maybe we should talk about the special counsel and how the special counsel was appointed. Then he mentions it again in a separate opinion. I will say I am surprised because my understanding is that the weight of authority goes against this, meaning most judges assume that the appointment of a special counsel, the way Jack Smith was appointed, does in fact comply with the appointments clause. And we're really talking about a constitute provision of the Constitution that tells us how you can appoint certain people, meaning is this something where you need the advice and consent of Congress or is this a situation where Congress can say to a president, you have the power to do this on your own? And what Judge Eileen Cannon is saying this morning is that, in fact, the 
we don't have the power that he was not appointed through the proper channels. It, she also says there's a problem with how his position was funded. Um, she didn't get to that because she said, well, we're going to dismiss this with respect to the appointments clause only. Um, I am surprised, I will say, incredibly lucky break for the former president. Jessica, does it raise any questions about Judge Eileen Cannon? There seemed to be some concern earlier on in this case whether she had the experience or whether she was over her skis in this particular case. What are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts are that Donald Trump got a judge who was very much willing to hear all of his arguments. So even when she ruled against him, she would hold hearings on issues like this one regarding the appointment of a special counsel. I will say that another federal judge, I think, would look at how we appoint special counsels, would look at our pattern and practice and say, we don't have to hold a hearing on that. But you have Judge Eileen Cannon saying, yes, we'll hold a multi-day hearing on that. And this is not the only instance. We've seen other instances where Judge Eileen Cannon has essentially paused the trial in order to consider a variety of different arguments that former President Trump has put forward. She actually put this case on kind of an indefinite question mark in the sense that she took it off calendar. So... Um, Judge Eileen Cannon, I will just say, is a judge that the Trump team had to be very excited about getting because, at the very least, she entertained all of these questions, and that was a win for him up until this point. Now we have a huge win for him in this case being dismissed. And the timing of it also couldn't be more perfect for him. Let's go back to Scott McFarland, who's been covering the Trump case. Scott, what role did Congress play in all of this? The president's allies in Congress, his fellow Republicans, were trying to knock this case down for him. They had made all these efforts over the past few months to defund the special counsel, to zero out the money his office uses to prosecute the cases. They needn't do so anymore on this case because Judge Cannon has done it for them. There still is that January 6th case Jack Smith has in Washington, which has faced all kinds of complications due to the former president's appeals. This is likely to be another complication, and the prospects of that going to trial before November were already particularly slim. They may now be invisible. And just to, to button this up, you may ask yourself, well, how did a Trump-appointed judge, Judge Eileen Cannon, so new to the bench, get this case, this heavy historic case? The federal court system uses something they call a wheel, which is a term basically to say it's a raffle. They're picking a name out of a hat, so to speak, to choose the next judge up. But where the case was filed, in that part of that district of Florida, there are very few judges on the wheel. The odds were not small that the case would fall to Judge Eileen Cannon. It's in her hands, and she has made quite a striking decision today. Scott McFarland, thank you very much. Do you think this will affect the other cases, the other outstanding cases against Donald Trump? I know it's in two different, in, in another state, but do you think that this will have any effect on that? The Washington, D.C. case is being brought by the same prosecutor. Easily can foresee former President Trump's lawyers trying to mechanize this ruling up in Washington, D.C. to throw more uh, spokes in the wheel. But it's also a more fundamental issue here. You know, we're at a moment, as I stand here in Pennsylvania, where we're being urged to take the temperature down. Let's take the heat out of our politics. Judge Eileen Cannon, for whatever reason, has just struck a nerve. People have been concerned the former president is going without accountability for allegedly mishandling and having classified records he was not supposed to have. It's making it harder to tamp down the passions when a ruling like this comes down. All right, a lot of questions today. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you very much. Just a quick recap of the breaking news that we started telling you about at the, at the top of the hour. The federal judge in the classified documents case against former President Donald Trump in Florida has just dismissed the prosecution because of concerns over the appointment of the prosecutor. That would be Jack Smith. Our coverage will continue on our streaming network, CBS News 24-7, and on your local news, and of course tonight on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. Many of you will now return to CBS Mornings, and this has been the CBS News Special Report. I'm Gail King, here in New York.